Okay, so we're going to talk about managing large web networks or sites and a bunch of millions of sites or thousands of sites and things like that. Uh, you know, before I get started, uh, of course, they asked us to add the slide for the sponsors, so thank you to all the sponsors, including uh, us, KWAL, to come and support and help and grow the Drupal community. Uh, this is what I wanted to go through, and so I want to just give you a little bit of like why, why would we talk about this, about KWAL. Uh, I want to dive into the complex web, and then I want to talk about how to manage that through metrics, expectations. Uh, we have a product that's available for you to use for free on the, the Corvus.com site that I want to share some of that that we've been building and trying to support our clients with, and just answer Q&A and chat. Um, so KWAL has been around since 2007. We've been doing Drupal since Drupal 4.7. That's kind of when it was popular and there was not much going on. So uh, at that point, I think I, my first comment in Drupal.org was uh, Salesforce module. I was like, I don't know if anyone else is doing this, but here's the code. And then somebody told me I was doing something wrong. And then that's kind of how Drupal usually does it, right? So we've done uh, much more than 800 websites, but we do a bunch of web networks and things like that. I'd say probably more around client-wise. We've probably got, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of clients. And uh, we're spread across the world now, just like everyone else. But we originated in Scottsdale. We opened an office in Dallas and those areas. Then we opened it in Orange County, California. And then now it's everyone everywhere all over the place. Um, we do everything from research to support, maintenance, all the things that you need to do. Uh, we're strategic thinker doers. Uh, I sent that video out, I think, a little while ago, but, you know, I like the idea that we're a we're problem-focused, solution-focused company. We're, of course, doing a ton of Drupal work, but at the same time, we're, like, there to solve problems, and we're not there to sell a product to people. So, uh, as a lot of people get really into, like, can Drupal do this? Yes, but, you know, if there's another tool, let's explore. Uh, that's definitely where we're at and looking at um, specific verticals. So, we work in government and in higher ed and and uh, a lot of enterprise sites where it's maybe like a bunch of franchises, stuff like that. So uh, what kind of gets us going is like helping a lot of people. Uh, and we love Drupal, like I said, four, seven and now, uh, we're really deep into the Drupal space. And uh, it's, it really does show from that many years, like we really, really care. Uh, here's, a, here's a smattering of our staff. Um, we believe a good website is initially easy to edit. So in the way back days, I chose Drupal for us to help support because uh, the ease of use, you know, WordPress, yes, but also I could then tune it down and give you exactly what a view of things I want you to do. And so our pitch back in the day in 2007 was like, allow us to build your website and we'll give you the tools to actually do something with it. And so we still firmly believe on that. Um, keeping it modern and on brand, knowing that like just like everything, it needs to be refreshed over time. We want to make sure that we can give you a platform that's good for you for four to six years. And uh, of course, little maintenance and things on that, making something shinier, the bootstrap, something else is going to change. But we don't want you to finish a project and then immediately feel like it's out of date. And knowing that in uh, government space or uh, education space and a lot of these things, some of these projects take like 12 months. So a lot of the time, if you're already working kind of on a dated design or a dated program, you're dated the second you actually go live a year or a year and a half later. We want to make sure that we're on top of that and delivering on, on latest trends that aren't um, risky. And then easy to navigate, so on the user side, admin side, user side, we want to make sure that everyone actually can get to what they want. That's just like one website. Uh, when we talk about the complex web, uh, when you look at government institutions, you look at uh, the health department, anything like that, we know that since the beginning of time that things have shifted and changed and gotten more and more um, uh, difficult. So legal requirements, site visitor expectations, uh, content creation, if you look at the two pictures I have here, one is from 2006 and one is from uh, recently last year. So what's different? Drag and drop, you know, the Googleification of things. Like people just want to create content like it's a slideshow. 
and they want all the rest of the site to work as it should. Uh, back in 2006, that was pretty good when you saw the whole text and you were like, neat. You know, um, I think Gris just talked in the Starshot thing about how back in the day you'd spend days uh, building like a Linux computer, right? No internet, figuring it all out, trying to figure out how it gets to work, and then miraculously it compiles and your computer starts, and that was amazing. Well, if you look at a kid nowadays, they would have just thrown that thing out in 30 minutes because that's not the experience people want anymore. They want to just turn it on and start using it. So I'm uh, considering this era, uh, is what I tell some of our clients, is the just give me the thing era. Like I don't want to learn all that stuff. I just get my phone, I download the app, I install, and I start writing things. So we don't want to waste our time anymore, and that's um, really apparent with how everybody works. If you can't figure it out, you throw it away. How many people have used AI products that you've tried once and you said that was hard, and then you just stopped using it? Um, so, in the give me the thing era, when you look at the two types of people that, uh, of systems that we see across universities and government spaces, we see kind of two spots. We see the, um, what people call the centralized team, where everything has to go through central IT or marketing or something like that, and maybe they have one website with a lot of things on it. That becomes this central mega site with every department, everything in it, starts getting more and more complex over time. Or we see the decentralized model where we see like 1,800 websites, we see 2,000 websites, we see uh, like ASU, Arizona State University has 1,800 websites at least at this point, all just different things. But they gave them one framework and said you can do that, but you have to use this. Um, but you're in charge of doing whatever you've got to do. Your budget, your thing, that's all yours. So we either see that, or we see the centralized team where everything's on the one website, maybe two, three websites, uh, and you have to stay here, and you've got to ask us for content change. Each one of those has uh, drastic issues with empowering the end users who are writing the content or providing the imagery or managing to maintain the site because either on the mono site, you have one site that's holding all the things, they start getting tired of asking you for stuff. They start getting tired of asking you, can you update this? Hey, I need this updated. Waiting a week or two to get it updated. That's a very similar old school model. Well, they don't want to wait anymore. So after a while, we're just going to stop asking because it was hard. On the decentralized, we see here's a thing you can start with or figure it out yourself and we see exhaustion on trying to beat all the requirements, the expectations that need to be done to get done. So what we see there through that is even if you start with a starting point, um, they don't have enough experience around uh, accessibility, performance, SEO, and they don't have a budget for it. So then you're looking at something where you give it somebody's starting point to do whatever you want. And then by the time they actually get a site up, they learn about Drupal, they're already tired and they're like, I don't want to do that either. And so what we see in organizations is actually a lot of stalling out. A lot of people that would have done really great stuff, but have stopped doing it because things were too hard from what they experience. So the great thing about Google Docs or things like that that have cost billions of dollars to create and maintain is given people empowerment on the web. They know that they can make this slideshow which took no work, right? Grab images, put stuff on there, and it just kind of works. So the expectation of something that we're giving them to write content in or build needs to be essentially that easy, but it also needs to give them the awareness of the, uh, the, the frills and the outside legal requirements and the things that they may need to get work done on. Um, this is just a small look of like a traditional digital workers world over there. So they have the internet, they have a CRM, they got this thing, this is old, so it's got Skype in there versus Teams, and, you know, HR tools, they've got a lot. And, um, you know, they, they're not an expert in any of them. And so they're hopefully done in a way that's very, very easy, but things can get really out of control very quickly. So if we go back to the model here, if it's decentralized, um, we can look at like uh, the state of Wisconsin's healthcare system. It has not just one website, it has a lot of websites. 
And so you can kind of lose the vision of what is out there. What am I in charge of? Uh, you can lose kind of touch with what's out there in the, the internet space, no matter which way someone's point of view. Uh, you know, when it's a large institutional organization, it needs multiple teams with various needs, as I pointed out. You need design people, you need accessibility people, all these things. Uh, the employee turnover, we've noticed, uh, especially in Drupal, creates a lot of confusion and startovers. So because they don't know what they have, they don't know who built it, somebody built it differently. Uh, once they've gotten inherited the site, they end up just throwing it away and starting something new. Uh, and then sometimes they just don't know what to do. So all of those things we see across these networks of different things. Um, what's interesting is they kind of blend, like when you do the monocyte model, you'll see somebody end up at the multi-site model because they'll be too tired to support all the different staff, stuff like that. Um, so here's some things we tried to do with our the Corpus starting point. Uh, we tried to help all of our customers stop endless website rebuilds. As a lot of people talk about, the website rebuild universe is just like a start over. It's easier to start over sometimes. But we know a lot of times in Drupal, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it's better to just fix the glitch than to go through thousands of hours of work. Uh, we've seen in departments where people see other tools. They see Wix or Squarespace or whatever. And they're just like, that is way too hard. I don't know Composer. I don't know any of this stuff in here. It has tools not built for me. And I want to go make something. So then they take their budget, and they go make something on Wix that's totally off-brand, not the right colors, not accessible. And you don't even know it's there until you get like a letter. And you're like, oh, that's the law firm. Oh, that's not accessible. Oh, OK, that's not our website. It was something something gov.com or some somebody just made it because they really had a person the passion and they just didn't know where to go and they did it themselves. Uh, you know, massive liability. And then uh, for us, a lot of time there's just lack of visibility of what is all this stuff, even at an IT department themselves. Uh, so a lot of that lack of clarity on systems as tools is something we've been passionate about trying to find ways to give people better awareness and simplify a process. Um, so when we look at all those things, I wanted to point out a few of the things that must have been done to get you to a point on Drupal that is not Drupal. So as much as we're passionate about um, accessibility, whatever you decided to create has to be accessible at the end, almost for anyone. Well, basically for anyone. Uh, even a small cafe website has the same legal requirements as the biggest website you've ever seen or whitehouse.gov or anything like that. So with that, there's a lot of unsureness of what is accessibility. Is it, am I good? I don't know. Um, without having a, a complex scanning tool, and even if you do have that, sometimes you don't know how to remediate that. Uh, that is a, a difficult expectation for somebody who's starting out, especially in somebody who's never even used Drupal. They don't know how to do it. Uh, Lighthouse scores is just a simple way, but performance metrics are, are uh, urgently important for your search and for your ability for people to retain uh, traffic on your site and, and find your site and all these things, and a lot of people don't know how to get that. And then just staying up to date is uh, a problem with all open source things. There's always, even if it was a headless tool or something, there's always something out of date. And if you're not an um, expert in the field or you're not responsible for it, then you just won't do it because you don't know how, and when you do, you break something. Some of the tools I just wanted to kind of go through um, might be used and, uh, in your systems, or you might think about using some of these. Uh, there's everything from site improvement, DubBot, and everybody kind of seen those who scan your site and, and look through, uh, you know, for issues and misspellings and broken links and things like that. Uh, there is widgets like Accessibility and UserWay that are technically not making your site accessible, but they kind of are a uh, very questionable result, and they're not usually considered legally um, okay to use. But you'll see them on like I'm sure you've seen them on every restaurant little widget, 
kind of in your way trying to get you to keep it accessible when the site itself is truly not. Uh, and then there's things like JAWS that does audio. There's uh, Google itself does a, a scoring. And then um, there's a company called Alliant that we use a lot that does uh, actual disabled teams of employees actual testing on your site. It's not cheap at all, but I highly suggest it if you want to be sure and very confident that you're uh, delivering an accessible result. Uh, there's a few different ways for Drupal. I put this slide up, and there's a link here, which if you do find this later, uh, you can look at, but uh, Vardot has a, uh, a great blog about the different accessibility modules that you can use on your site to help. Obviously, there's a Massive requirement, if you've done a great job at the theme, it should do a lot of that work, but obviously media alts can be difficult. And then all the content, what you see is what you get, fields are in there. But there is um, a lot of these tools in here in this blog, this um, blog that is very helpful. In site performance, that's another area that people uh, need to have done and, and we get challenged to do in our site builds that a lot of in-house teams sometimes can't get done because they don't know how to fix the first contentful paint or a speed index or a total blocking time and how to which one's a host problem, which one's a, a site problem, or is it a problem? Do I need to get 100% or is something that takes a while because it's a video on my homepage acceptable? So um, some of that is good through Lighthouse score testing, um, site searching tools, UX is a very important piece of, uh, of site performance because obviously if you have to go to seven pages to get to the one thing you need to get to, then that's seven times longer to get to. Um, not bashing Drupal GovCon, but like for me to find some things, it's seven mobile plane drag deep. Great site. But because I had to load seven pages to get to it, when I could have figured out how to navigate to one maybe through content, would make your score a lot higher and actually having a better bounce rate on some of that and some of those indexes would be a good result. Uh, we do a uh, website we have managed for Hungry Howie's Pizza. We've done that for 15 years, maybe longer. And uh, they have franchises and our goal is to get you off the website. Our goal is to get you to mindlessly mash a border button, you know, because we're either like, you need to feed your kids or it's 3 a.m. in the dorm, just give me pizza, right? Get right now, I just need to get you off the site. So we want to increase that exit onto the order site. So there's sometimes where you're looking at metrics like Lighthouse scores and, and analytics, and you're like, well, that's actually what I want to see. And so it's difficult for people to understand some of that stuff. Some of the expectations now, uh, as we see with like Starshot, some of the other initiatives, is to keep everything up to date. And there was always a saying way back in the day, like, don't hack Drupal core. But uh, people would, and they would modify modules, and they wouldn't have a repository, and Git, and all these things. And now we have also Composer, and we have patches, and we have testing going on in this whole system that is Drupal. But people still expect it to be easy to update, as it was back then when they just pasted a module into an FTP thing. So, when we have these layers that are more complex, it doesn't stop the expectation of, hey, this still needs to be easy for me to update. And right now, sometimes it can be very difficult. Here's a list of a few things when I did some assessments of, I don't know, like pretty much 50 RFPs that I went through uh, of things that are always kind of just asked from uh, expectation of a website, whether that's Drupal, or not. Uh, it was obviously some sort of level of security, content authorship, web forms, drag and dropping components, emailing of a web result or something like that, some sort of a workflow, drafting, scheduling, publishing, content revisions, uh, an ability to upload media and documents and images, but also have scaling built in. Uh, complex navigational options readily available, whether that be a mega menu or a hamburger menu or some sort of miraculous thing I've thought of. Um, mapping, Google Maps. I want to put a map of this location on a blog or this thing. 
uh, capable of integrating with my email system, my CRM, some sort of third-party content embed of some sort, a localist event thing, or a, something else I, I want to plug in, my Twitter block. Uh, user roles and very explicit permissions. Repeatable content blocks. I want to just put the address here, and when I update it here, I want it everywhere. Searchable, comparable to a Google search experience. Like those all sound very normal, right? Like we would all want those to be how our site is. So everybody's asking for that. And what I see a lot of the time is everybody attempting to work on those things, slightly different each time, but trying to get the same result. So then you add that by every client to every client's website. It's like an unwinnable task sometimes. So what we've done for a lot of things is we've started with an MVP. Now everyone in Drupal's done this in a billion ways, star shot, things like that. Uh, you can't have an MVP that's too declarative because we know that like in Drupal we have people who have different needs. We have the restaurant site, we have the government site, we have the parks department, we have the school, and everyone's using Drupal. So we can't necessarily be too generic and we can't be too specific. But we know there's an MVP for most. When we went back to that list, pretty much everyone's like, yeah, that would be pretty good. Uh, secondarily, we need to know that uh, if we create our own front end, we're creating something that might be difficult to maintain when there's something like Bootstrap or other frameworks out there that we can use to keep things responsive and updated and have different code uh, to rely on, just like open source from Drupal. So maybe utilizing a front-end framework would allow for a lot of that to work out. And then uh, I see a lot of self-hosting. I see a lot of people very stressed out that work in departments that do self-hosting. I always suggest that we reduce risk by manage, using a managed host or a platform that's keeping PHP up to date, SSH isn't a thing, all of that stuff that you see vulnerabilities out there, and you're like, is that a me problem? Uh, it's not when you have a managed host, at least they're mitigating that, they have a WAF, their day-to-day -day is pretty good. So you can, if your job is to focus on the web in any way, tech or marketing, your job is also not to how to learn how to fix a Redis cache because it ran out of disk space or something like that. Like, um, you know, I don't do any oil changes on my car anymore, but I used to because it was easy, but now, why would I do that when someone else can do it way faster, better, and cleaner when I'm done with it? So uh, a lot of that learning is um, what we have at the K-Wall space, and that's why we're always helpful and capable of solving problems. And we created an Corbus.com site, who, which has uh, a lot of really cool tools that I'm going to share with you. So uh, what is it? So it's multiple things, it's a lot of things. We've uh, built a website deployment tool. So if you have a starter kit or a Drupal site that you want to use or a WordPress site you want to use, you can put it into the system and then roll sites off of the top of it. We all could do that separately, um, but this allows you to do it with content and uh, simply, and it's built for an end user that doesn't know anything about Drupal doesn't know anything about web hosting. Uh, they can just get a site and start working on it. Uh, our goal there was to make sure that, unlike our usual agency approach, which was research, define the content types, come up with the stuff, figure out what that is, design it, now implement it. Okay, now your timeline hit here. Here's your site, we're gonna teach you in a month. Get all your content in there. And what happens? Well, you gotta extend your timeline because you don't have time because you're just learning about how to write content in this brand new platform. And instead, we're flipping that and saying, just deploy a site. It's going to have your logo, color, stuff in it. Start writing your content. You have the, the tools to do the, the moving content around, the slideshow, the basics you need. It's yours. Go for it. Um, the second thing we want in a Corbis is we wanted to make it a uh, visibility tool for uh, people who have a lot of websites. So we knew that a lot of our clients um, will have a main marketing IT team that have about five sites, let's say. And then they have this department that has 14 sites. 
And when you go into even like an Acquia or a Pantheon environment, they don't always see those in the same way. They're hard for them to understand where they are. And then also there's stuff that's just kind of like off those systems that they couldn't keep track of. And so they didn't have a place to just log in and be like, oh, yeah, we have all those things. So I'll share with you kind of what that looks like and how they have different collections of different uh, web things out there in our, in our platform. And then we wanted it to be an awareness and analysis tool above and beyond the level of uh, you have 3,000 nodes and 200 blocks, you know, and 12 users. We wanted to make sure that you actually know some of the things I pointed out, the liabilities, the risky stuff, what is on this website. So I'll share some of that with you now. Um, this is kind of the slogans that we came up with. So, you know, the web priorities of your company can't wait for another four to 10 months for you to launch a website. As I said, they want to give me the thing. If they could do it in 10 minutes based on a great starting point, great. Uh, we, we, in our user stories, we did IT free tools are essential for your internet internal web teams to achieve their objectives. And then teams that are dispersed are less aware of their resources, which lead to a waste and duplication. So all of those things were kind of the buttons that uh, we looked at for Corvus. And so just for timing, I'm gonna jump out and give you an idea of what a Corvus can look like. So I've just uh, logged into one of our accounts and you have the ability to manage your organization. So when you first log in, you'll come to something like this, which will allow you to upload a logo, choose some fonts, build a color palette real quickly. If you don't know it, who cares? Just put it in there. And then um, once you do that, you're able to go in to that organization and uh, deploy out websites. So if I went into this one, you can create different collections for different types of things. If I wanted to create a collection for Drupal GoCon, I do that, go through the process here. If they have a different brand set up, you can go in the advanced options and change those colors and those logos and things like that. It's only a really high level purpose there in the collection level is to uh, give someone access to a uh, different brand. But once you get to the site, if it's off the starter kits, it will inherit those and you can change them on the site just as you could in your Drupal theme. So uh, we've built it in a method that you can come in here, you can give users access to your organization, we can set up single sign-on. They come in, they log in, they just see what they see. So as a as an owner of the IT space in here, I could build out different collections of websites that you can see yourself. Uh, and then other people on your staff can come log in here. That's not necessarily giving them logins to each one, but it will give them a heavy visibility into what's available to their space. This doesn't have to be something that's deployed from this platform. It could be something as simple as um, we're working with like Bluebell ice cream, just threw it in here, and uh, some other site. You know, Maybe you just want to put a link in to something that they're also in charge of in their collection. You can build out collections of, of stuff. And what the system will do is it will analyze them. It will look at the Lighthouse scoring. It will give you um, information into what's there. So it'll look at discovered extensions. I think we noticed a lot of the time is people don't know what is on their website. So when you say, well, what are you using? Are you using Google Analytics? Are you, how do you know all this stuff? What's, what are, what's on your website? And they go, I don't know. So you're like, okay. Well, why don't we find out for you? So we've done uh, some looking at discovering what extensions are on there. So uh, it doesn't matter if you've deployed this from a starter kit or you just went on a Corvus and logged in and put your sites in here. It will kind of look at your extensions, see what you've got out there. It will also look at your Lighthouse scoring and it will do some uh, pretty deep back checking. So it's gonna look at uh, third party lists for phishing. It's gonna look at third party lists for block, blocking uh, of your site because of malware. It's gonna tell you. So if it detects those in your Corvus platform, it's gonna let you know. At the same time, you can run uh, different uh, lighthouse scoring tests. So it, you can see I did Drupal GovCon to start this out. Great result, right? 72%? Great. Site's loading fun. Uh, but yeah, you can go in there, you can compare, you can actually see what failed. 
and uh, I'll show you a deeper look at that. But not only can you do that just at a simplistic layer from the um, web result, but you can actually go in and do a deep scan where you can see where you're at. So part of that also has the ability to dig deeper. And this is stuff that like is off the Drupal space, right? Like, but it's super important. If I said, hey, what's your lighthouse scores? They would say, I don't know. And then what would they do? They'd go to Google Lighthouse. They would do the homepage scan and be like, we're at 92%. And you're like, kind of, but you're not. So you know, having this ability to get deeper into each individual page is a part of the visibility level that the corpus is we're, we're adding to constantly. So we have some of those tools as well. You can pull it up, you can look at um, the actual lighthouse scoring of that. Let's see if the internet provides me some love. Oh, it did. Uh, you know, and dive deeper into that. So really some of this stuff is allowing non-technical people to say, oh, I need to get help with this. And then go find that help. Where before somebody just appears out of nowhere and goes, your accessibility is bad. And you're like, I don't know what to do with that. And so what we do is we get a big stall and we get a bunch of running around and no one knows if it costs $18 million to fix or if it was just like a three minute fix. So some of that visibility is baked in. Uh, we also have a deeper web check system we connected to in here that will do a bigger scan and let you get really nerdy if you want, uh, or if we want to look at what DNS records you have, what your headers are, you know, you can get really, really nerdy. You can be curious about what's at port 8080, you know, uh, you can look at what's blocked. You can find out what your carbon footprint is if you really want to know. So that's just a very few uh, of the features that we're adding to the analysis and the detail behind what's happening out here in this. Now, part of that allows us to just give you an awareness of what's happening and allows you to choose what to do. We're adding uh, partners and vendors to help you with any of those things. So I talked about Alliant, uh, you know, this company called Design Pickle. They need, you need something, you can find what you need down here in this marketplace, but uh, generally, we're mostly focused on the bigger piece of the awareness tool. Uh, if I wanted to go create a new site, I could come in here, I won't go through the whole process, but I can choose a different starter kit. I could have either created my own or we're providing more and more starter kits day after day for anything from a portal website that you want people to log into completely without having public access to uh, a city starter kit that I'll share in a minute to an event management website, to a parks department website. These are all places where you can start with the tools that, that agencies and enterprises need to get started. So a news center that has you know, tagging and good URL structure and great search to uh, a good complex search that works well to an events listing site that has recurring events and iCal feeds and things like that. Um, so a lot of the building blocks that we use every single day, we put thousands of hours into to try to push um, that like commonality across those systems. But that's not the only thing you can deploy. You can deploy a basic Drupal 10 site, things like that, uh, right off the bat here. It takes somewhere around 10 minutes, and it's going to send you an email with your login to the site with your logo and your colors. Feel free to change it. Um, it's all built on top of Pantheon, so you get all the Pantheon goodness of dev, test, prod, get all the nerdy stuff you want. But somebody that's not nerdy can come in here and be like, oh, I did want another copy of this um, Drupal GovCon site I created. Make a copy, destroy it, delete it, whatever. But they don't ever have to learn what Pantheon is, Bozer is. They just want to write content. They can come to get a site, do that, log in start writing content right on top of Drupal, which we found is incredibly complex versus what we're uh, providing people with today. Uh, the, one other thing I wanted to share. Oh, the one thing we did build in so far that's in early testing is any of our sites that have been built out with, for Drupal specifically on the Pantheon platform, so any starter kit you point out here, uh, we're able to just go find what the module is you want to add, and you just 
plug that into this field and hit add, and it will just go get the module, do all the composer work, and then add the module to your site. Because that was another area that uh, our teams and our, our partners wanted is, I don't want to have Composer on my site. I, my, I don't have Composer on my computer. How am I going to get this module I want to try? I want the smart content module. All I need to do is go to the site, get that bit, plug it in to that module, and I get it. Um, so that one workaround is actually incredibly valuable to most teams that don't have the technical capacity to add a module. So that's what we're doing with the Acorvus platform. Um, I wanted to share that today because it's a lot of those little bits of value that I've been trying to uh, give out to people to get more awareness, more capability, um, easier access to Drupal and things like that, and, uh, and give them more awareness and confidence that they can actually succeed. Uh, That's kind of what I have today. Go um, to the demo a little bit more. Is there any questions or comments or thoughts? How do you solve the data migration? Any ease of the process there? Or we are well. We do have some tools. We don't have them published yet on the Corbis, but we are working on a way for you to get most of your content over. We have tools that will do it, that just take a little bit of k-walling right now, but we're working through automating some of those to a point where uh, it will analyze what you have and make it a little easier for you to map and pull in. Acquia has a migrate tool, but like Drupal to Drupal, right? So uh, we use that, it's great. It does speed a bunch of things up if you wanted exactly what you already had. But we uh, do a lot of work around the migration of things that are anything. And so we are working through some of that to, uh, because we have a bit of standardization on the components we have in here, or a slideshow, or whatever. Um, I guess I could show you. You know, that uh, we can just kind of assume some things and then bring it over and keep your legacy HTML and allow you to manage it. So we are working through some of that, but it's not wide yet. Yeah. So and if you were talking about that piece of place that has a bunch of franchises, I imagine uh, each one of the franchises has their own site, but they all come off of a, a standardized looking field according to their brand. Essentially, site. yeah. Right. And then, okay, now these sites are up. They, and then on Wednesday, Google Security comes up with an array. They don't need to worry about it. No. Right? Yeah, we automate that, and then it all comes through the system. So if there's any of the sites that are deployed here with our starter kit, or if uh, some of the customers that are coming out with certain things uh, that are in the system, um, we allow them to opt out, but like if they want, we automate that updates. So the updates are coming down, we're testing them, and then they're going into the system. So you're always going to be up to date constantly. So uh, they're always like people that are like, I don't want that, so we, we allow you to opt out of that, but yeah. So, I mean, if it's not too much of a uh, secret sauce, the way you do that is by treating each one of these as a separate site, or you're doing it by saying, oh, I'm gonna update a profile, that means I've got... It's a mix of a few things. Yeah, so we do have, um, since we are using some of this built under, under you know, Pantheon system, uh, or other systems, like we have that ability to use like their upstream system to keep a core up to date. And so any of the core stuff's up to date. And then as individual sites too, we can run programs to do that as well. But, and that allows us to be a little more uh, sensitive to things that are different because we know there's a city starter kit here. You can deploy that today on your phone and when you leave, you're gonna have one. And uh, then you're gonna change a bunch of stuff, add a bunch of modules, maybe something isn't quite compatible. But, uh, you know, at the way we are, especially uh, I'm talking Drupal specifically, the way this is all configured is very, very flexible to allow for things. We don't see a lot of issues across that, um, unless you're like a hardcore person doing some really oddball stuff, usually. Yeah. Yeah, so this is an example of the one that uh, we built for cities where it has an alert system, a search, 
you know, uh, the large navigation setup, a glossary, a document repository system, um, you know, kind of the stuff they usually ask us to do over and over and over. So this is all completely changeable, colors, layout, all the components are flexible, and you can just start using it in five minutes. And uh, you know, it has a 30-day trial. If anybody just wants to go in there and create an Corvus organization and do crazy stuff, please do and share your feedback with me. I would love it. But you know, it costs nothing to just set up and, and try. And it costs nothing to run uh, like all those web scans and stuff like that. So it's just really if, if you're doing like actual hosting work, then obviously there's a cost behind it. And uh, we're using it with quite a few different organizations right now. It's been really, really fun. If I start to outgrow it, can I take it with me? Yeah. Can I export it? Yeah. I can take anything out. Do you have a. I'm thinking from a, a government perspective. Do you have a self hosted one? You know, they like to have all their stuff kind of yes. in their own garden. and. We do have a method of self hosting it, yeah. So. And then, yeah, like even just this platform itself, we can do an individual one for that instance as well. So we can take it and have you just have your own instance of the, the Corpus platform so you're never involved with the other one because that's also a thing that, that people want to support white label set up. Yeah. And modify it, right? Maybe you don't want this, do want that. So we're very aware of that. We built it with that flexibility in mind because we're really just building this for enterprise. And at the same time, we're putting it out in the public because it's the same problems the public's having. But we want to fix, we're, we're always working in the enterprise world, the government world. So we want to make sure that we're fixing those problems with the platform. But it's the same problems we're seeing out everywhere. So. I want everyone to be able to have better awareness and simplistic tools that are uh, removing the tech debt, you know, from their their needs. So, like one client, uh, one client's department was ecstatic that they they needed to deploy 14 sites with a very similar model. So they came in here, customized one setup of their already created system, and then cloned it out 14 times, gave it to the 14 different people go ahead, start running content. And before, that was something that they had a very hard time succeeding at because they went to Central IT. Central IT goes, I'm overwhelmed already. We can't do that. Are you sure you need 14? And they're like, well, now I just kind of gave up. And then we gave them a platform. And they were like, OK, now we can do it. And they went and did it. And it was valuable to get um, people back on their information they wanted to put out there. And it was important for their department. But for Central IT, it wasn't important. I don't know what that is. That is connected. <laughs> okay. Yeah, any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you guys. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you.